am Inez Olea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create these lower thirds. So let's open up After Effects and get started. Hello, I'm Inez Olea from ToleratedCinematics.com and I'm a professional filmmaker. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and if you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our channel, you can buy this template on our website and just change the text and you will have your lower thirds. For those that want to follow the tutorial, let's get started. So we have our composition, let's create a new composition and rename this to main. So I will change my width and height to Full HD 1920 by 1080p, change it to 10 seconds and click OK. Then I will create a new composition right away and rename this to logo and re well change my width and height to 350. I think that's an okay width and height and import my logo right here. Um, I imported the logo of uh, Facebook because I want to link my Facebook page and then I will create a new solid right here in that composition. With my pivot tool, I will change well choose the color of my Facebook logo, click OK and drag it down here. So background, rename it and there we go. And then we will go back to my main composition and drag my logo in here. Then once I've done that, I'll just put it on the side and choose my text tool here and write follow us on Facebook and with a white color. I'm using the font Lado Bold uh, with a little bit of spacing here. Uh, 250 would be okay, but okay, well, whatever. Doesn't matter, whatever your preferences are. Um, then I will duplicate my text here by holding Ctrl, pressing D on the keyboard, dragging it down, and then with Ctrl T, I will uh, well just edit my text here. So that would be Facebook.com/tolerated/cinematics. There we go. Um, then I will create a new solid here, also in the same color of our Facebook, and rename it to Rectangle Background. Okay, then I will uncheck my eye over here so we can see our background here and I will just make like a long rectangle just like so and then just enable my uh, eye again and then I'll drag it down here so we can see our text above it and just drag my text in the center of it. So uh, you can see that it's not perfect so we'll have to uh, use our arrows on the keyboard to place it a little bit better. And then also with your rectangle, choose a mask tool and select the last two buttons here, well, points here, and just uh, with the arrows also bring it in a little bit. And there we go. And just bring it on the bottom of our layers. So on our logo, we can go to effects and presets and search for drop shadow. And that will separate our logo from our uh, rectangle here. So if we drag it on our logo, we can see that we have some shadow over here. You can leave it as it is, or you can play around with the softness. I'll change my softness to 15. Now we get some softness over here. Then you can duplicate your uh, drop shadow, maybe change the opacity to something like 20 and go for a distance of 25 and 35 over here. So uh, that will give you these uh, extras over here. Uh, maybe lower it even more to 15. And that's something very subtle, even then would be uh, a little bit better. And something really subtle, but it's going to give that 3D dimensions uh, to our title here. So then I will choose my uh, link here actually with the rectangle background and I will go to layer, pre-compose this and I'm going to um, actually uh, rename this to link, so hyperlink text, okay. So we have this right over here, so we'll bring this down beneath the logo. And also for the followers on Facebook, I'm actually going to pre-compose this as well to title. And then we're going to uh, bring our title actually a little bit more towards here. I should have done that before uh, pre-compositing it, but it's not really that important. I'm just going to place it somewhere over here and that seems nice. Then also what I'm going to do is jump into my hyperlink text. And what I will do here is actually duplicate my rectangle background and just make it a little bit lighter from color. So go to layer, solid settings and just make it a little bit lighter here. So there we go. Then duplicate it again and we're going to double click on one of these points over mask 
And now what we're going to try to do is hold control, make it larger on the height and also larger on the sides. And actually we should be uh, disabling this and try to see, uh, to even these out. So uh, you can see the uh, width is a little bit higher than, uh, than the height. So we'll try to even this out. So uh, let's zoom in enough, uh, something like this. And let's see, uh, it's not there quite yet. And actually you can, you can do it like this. Bring this down a little bit, okay. You can eyeball it, it's completely up to you. Um, but this way we have like a little bit larger of a rectangle uh, around our actual rectangle. And then go to the effects and preset and search for stroke. And we will drag that stroke onto that solid layer and choose for a paint style on transparent. And now if we're going to toggle off our mask options here, uh, we can actually see that, but if we go to full, uh, you can actually see that. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we can see it. Uh, it's a little bit too too much spacing here on the right. So what we can do is just bring down our mask just a little bit more. So click on these two buttons holding shift and then just bring them down with the arrows just a little bit so you can see uh, that everything works out well. And actually I brought them in a little bit too much. So one out and there we go. So this I think is correct. Uh, so we'll keep it at, as it is right now. And then you can play around with the start and the finish. Actually, I'm going to toggle this so we can actually see it a little bit better. And there we go. So we'll keep the start over here. And actually, uh, well, we can keep the start a little bit further away. So there we go. And let's play with the end, end a little bit. Okay, there we go. So this is what I want to end up with. So one second into my timeline. I will create a keyframe for the start and for the end and then go back. And now what I will do is uh, change my start to something more towards the beginning. And then for the end, I will do the same thing also. Uh, with the, I'm actually playing with my arrows now. And now you can see that we're not seeing anything of these lines anymore. So that's perfect. So now we have the animation of our line that's growing. Okay, looking pretty nice. Okay, so we'll pr press U on the keyboard. And if we press that, we will see our keyframes. If we select our keyframes, right click keyframe assistance, easy ease, and go into the graph editor. Uh, we can play with uh, the last two keyframes and just bring them in all the way we can. So now if you're going to preview this, you're going to see that they're stopping really slow. And that's something really cool that I like a lot in these kind of effects. So if we go back to the main, we have something like this right now. Actually, um, for our hyperlink text, uh, our, it's not showing in the main because of our resolution, of course. So change the resolution to full. And now we have something like this. It's growing out there. So another thing that we should do is play with these two rectangles here. So go to effects and preset and actually solo this last rectangle here. Go to um, linear wipe and drag this onto your last solid layer here. And then if we're going to play around, we can see that it's uh, growing the other way. So we ch should change the plus 90 to minus 90. And now it's going to play like this. So uh, we're going to go up to 100%. Just go to the beginning of our timeline, click on the stopwatch, also move one second and change it 100 to 0%. So now we have an animation like this. Also press U on the keyboard and again, just like all your keyframes, right click easy uh, keyframe assistance and easy ease. Go to the graph editor again. And again, for the last frame, just drag it in all the way you can and preview this. Okay, so it's not as slow as it should be. So let's go back into the graph editor. And for the first frame, we can actually bring this up as well. And then it's up to you. You can uh, leave it a little bit longer or whatever you want. And let's preview this. Okay, so that's way too fast. So I actually don't like it to be at the beginning uh, to, to be that slow at the beginning. So I'm going to bring this down. Actually, I'm going to just going to uh, undo a little bit of these things here and make it less longer Do something like two seconds and bring this in as much as I can. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is pretty cool. And then what I will do is actually duplicate these keyframes. 
well, these keyframes here, go to the beginning of my timeline and select the second layer here and just paste it over here. So now we have something like this. And now we can see that our um, degrees are different. It's uh, again, plus 90. And I'm not sure why, but if we copy something from one uh, linear wipe to another, um, it's going to uh, forget its settings. So we has, have to change this to minus 90 again. And now we'll have something like this and you won't see the other one uh, because it's actually uh, underneath it. So what you should do is bring this on top of the light color and make it delay like a few frames. So now we have first the light color to fill the frame and then the darker color to fill the frame. So now we have something like this. Okay, pretty cool. So if we go back to the main comp, we'll see that it's growing and then we should also have um, well, actually, we still solo this, so we should unsolo everything. So we should have it growing and the arrow around it. So that's that's cool. All right, so uh, let's go back into our hyperlink. We have one thing to do, and that's uh, search for text and close this folder of text, open it up again and open up the animate in here and drag it out so you can read it nicely and we can choose whatever we want. So fade up characters, I think uh, this will define and just to uh, drag it on top of our text, press U on the keyboard to reveal our keyframes for our text, drag them in at the beginning of our timeline. And actually for the last one, you can play with this, whatever you want uh, to, to be. And now we can see that the text is growing as something like this. And you can actually uh, put it over here, right click and also um, add an easy ease. And these are going to slow down our animations uh, towards the end. So Pretty cool. Okay, I really love this kind of style. And there we go. So now we have our logo. Uh, our logo should be a little bit smaller. It should be around here and a lot smaller. Something like this, I think. Okay, and we can position it again with our arrows on the keyboard. Move it a little bit more to the right. Um, and actually we can bring in our hyperlink text uh, background here so we can select all these uh, solids here, press M on the keyboard to select all these masks. Or actually, we'll have to do it manually. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing my mask right here. So we should do it like this. Then select all the masks. So, okay, select your mask manually and just bring it in a little bit for each of these layers like so. So we can't see it at uh, skipping the logo right over here. So now we have something like this. All right, and now for the title, uh, we should actually uh, make sure that it also has a mask. So I'm going to select my rectangle tool on my title here and drag over my follow is on Facebook like so. And there we go. And go into my title and go for follow is on Facebook, select the text and actually search for drop in by character. So drag this on our text and now you're going to see that it's actually dropping from the bottom. So what you should do is just uh, so click on this arrow, go into text and go into animator or uh, one, animator one, range selector. And actually um, the only thing we should change is uh, the position here and just make the position lower than the beginning. So it's actually going up instead of down. And you can also select, uh, if you toggle the switches, uh, we can select our motion blur here. And now we're going to get motion blur in the movement of our text, go back into the main and also select motion blur over here, toggle the switches and select motion blur for everything. And now uh, our text is going to come up like this, of course, way too slow. So we're going to open up our title here and drag this into like something over here. And again, we can right click easy ease and easy ease is uh, something that I really like to use in animation. So uh, let's see what this gives us. All right. So follow us on Facebook, tolerate cinematics. Uh, okay. That's great. Now, one thing that lasts us to do is uh, play with the logo here. So we have our scale. If you hold shift and press R on the keyboard, you're going to reveal both of these settings. And if you click on the stopwatch for scale and rotation at the beginning, uh, we can select our keyframes and move them a little bit further into the timeline and then change the uh, rotation to something that you like, something like this, uh, maybe minus 90. 
and or scale to zero. And now we have something like this. All right, so this is way slow. I'm going to bring this in so it's a lot faster. Okay, I like this. And actually we can uh, click on our title and our hyperlink test and move this a little bit more into the timeline. So we have first our logo popping up and actually this can be a lot faster. I'm not sure uh, what I've done in my preview, but okay, there we go. So this is what I'm actually looking for. And now for the special part, I have a little text copied in my uh, keyboard here. I will actually put it in a link in the description or actually in the description if I'm able to, uh, but you can copy that text so you shouldn't know it uh, from your head. It's something that I don't know uh, from my head either. But if you go into that main comp in the logo and you hold Alt and click on the scale, and just paste that and Alt click on the rotation and paste that. It's going to give that delay. So it's going to do the animation, then delay it a little bit. So you get something like this. Really cool. And there we go. So this is actually, yeah, that's it. So if you want to uh, use a different logo, go into the logo, drag in your logo and choose some kind of colors in the background that match your logo. So you get a nice square logo like this. And that's it. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel for more. And thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.